My name is Eric Glazer. Uh, my job isn't just to pretend to drive the simulator <laughs> during presentations. Uh, I'm an industrial designer on the human machine interface team. Uh, and I'm also in charge of the machine shop and our internal prototyping capabilities. Uh, so as you can see, in addition to kind of traditional shop tools, we have a CNC mill, a laser cutter, and a very high-end 3D printer. And this is kind of the core of our like quick prototyping efforts. And we need this because we build a lot of concept cars and um, one-off objects that we bring to Germany and show directly to top management. Uh, integrating new technologies that come out of Silicon Valley or you know, basically whatever ideas we can uh, get out on the whiteboards upstairs. Uh, so I guess if anybody would... Some of you are probably familiar with 3D printing technology. Um, this is an object, Connex 500. It's pretty top of the range. Try to get, if wants to see anything closer there. Uh, so the process that we follow with that is um, we have a lot of brainstorming. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. A lot of people who like to build things here. Uh, so we'll take as many ideas from like whiteboard stage, bring them into sketches, uh, really rough prototypes of foam or whatever, um, and then as quickly as possible move into a 3D printing where we can really get a feel for how an object will turn out. Um, for the cheapest materials first and then moving into more durable, more final quality stuff and then taking things all the way through to something that would be installable in a show car, uh, like sanded, painted, finished, polished. Uh, aluminum, real materials, ABS, whatever. So, we have a couple of advantages with this machine. Um, for instance, we like to show this off. This comes out of the machine fully assembled like that. Like, and this is a very valuable ability when you're building a one-off prototype show car because uh, you don't have to worry about mass production concerns when you have a show that's in two months. You can just get it done, get it looking right, show the technology, and get feedback from our management in Germany right away. What do one of those things cost? About $300,000. <laughs> and uh, it, the materials themselves are, are not exactly cheap either. So for an individual right. consumer, that would be pretty prohibitive. But for so us, this is for it's a model. This wouldn't actually do anything. This is too, too fragile to actually bear. That particular price. material, I mean, it's it's... Plastic. It's reasonably strong. It is uh, simulating, I forget which exact plastic that is. The green material is um, pretty close to ABS in terms of its heat deflection and strength. Uh, that one we like to use a lot. Um, this one's good for, I mean, complex mechanisms can be prototyped here. Uh, this is, we're actually you know, going to be doing something with that shortly. That's just one component of a much larger system that we're working on. And how long it takes for, to go from the, the process to make something like that? Uh, something like this would probably come out in less than two hours, actually. That's after it's drawn. Yeah, you hold it up. Sure, yeah, assuming you have the parts. Uh, I think the, most of the time is dedicated to the actual CAD design, which is something that you know, I'm involved with uh, on a very regular basis. And yeah, that's, that's where most of the time is. Once you have a good CAD model that you're happy with, uh, you're just limited really in the size of what the machine can print. How fast so, can go. Yeah, so the Z dimension takes a really long time. So this is like 40 hours in the printer right here. But that's one of the largest things we've done uh, since we got the machine. So you make a drawing in a computer and then you put it in, or how is, what's the process? Uh, it's usually either SolidWorks or CATIA, are the two softwares that we generally use. Um, so yeah, it's just CAD modeling, parametric CAD modeling. But then you can make all the little parts that go into the stream. Sure, well. yeah, all the different scale. I mean, it goes down, uh, this here we have a really functional prototype of something with uh, switches directly integrated. So in theory, you could plug those switches right into a board, and this would be a functioning electronic test piece really quickly. I mean, this is a two-part assembly. Each individual part probably would come out in about a half hour because of how short they are if you lay them flat. How much, I mean, just generally, how much has this improved the innovation process, the ability to use you know, 3D printing technology like this? I think it's, it's fantastic because you can have something in your hands so quickly. And this machine's great because uh, the post-processing is real easy. Uh, I can show you, like, once a, once a part is finished, you just pry it off and you can touch it right away. Um, there's no need for, yeah, I mean, it's, like, safe to touch. It's all, the support material is just kind of gooey, but it's non-toxic. It's just water-soluble, spray it off, and you can install this as soon as it's dry. Like, just dry it off with the air gun. So that's really useful for us because you can only get so far talking about something in, on a CAD screen station, uh, CAD station screen. You know, like you need to experience things, especially stuff like steering wheels or shifters or any of the other physical interfaces that we work on. 
drawings are great for getting you there, but making a real physical prototype and even integrating electronics right into these uh, 3D prints is the best way to, to understand if it's going to work or not.